take a Nissan Murano, lose the back doors and the top, and then add 16 grand to the base. Does that add up to more or less? Let's drive the 2011 Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet and check the tech. Now the number one feature of a cross cab is the cab part more than the cross part. Let's get into it. Open this enormous door, and by the way, these doors are huge because they take out the rear doors on a cross cab, extend the front door, and apparently store like Nazi gold inside this thing. These things weigh about a ton each. If you let go of one of these in a parking lot, you're going to kill the other car, just FYI. Now hit the button in the console and here we go. Let's watch the show. Notice how low this thing is, by the way. It's a very low profile rag top with a lot of framework in it. We'll check out the trunk space in a minute because you see the top is going to get completely submerged in that rear space behind the rear seat. Pretty fast in its actuation. And like most of the modern convertibles today, everything buttons up with a hard top and a bunch of nice panels. Okay, trunk space, about a B, B minus on this car. It's a big vehicle with a decent amount of space with the top down. That's what's hiding behind here. There's my top. Now, if I were to put this cover down, you can see, if that top weren't there, I'd gain some more altitude. It's never a giant trunk, but it's definitely usable for a weekend for two. The folks in the second row have to wear the same underwear the whole trip. Oh, check this out. When the top is up, you've got the rear backlight glass heated. Then you've got a spar here that's upholstered, and then they try and make some more window with this little kind of old Vista Cruiser thing up here. <music> By the way, the Murano Cross Cab just got the new CNAC CarTech 2011 award for vehicle with the most ways to amputate your limbs. These big old heavy doors is number one. Get a leg down there in the sill and one of these doors closes on it, forget it. You're a pirate running around with a peg leg and a parrot. And if you've got your hand up here on the header when you're closing the top, check this out. Oh, what's the point of that? Cross cabs only come one way, a high-end loaded up edition. You've got leather and you've got pretty much all the tech. Hard drive based GPS nav. Not an interface that I love, but not one that I hate. Looks a little dated, but 7-inch LCD, controller as well as touch, pretty much any way you want to drive it, or you can use voice as well. Your audio options are also pretty much all there. Satellite radio, AM, FM, no HD, uh, USB, AV aux jacks here in the console. And you've got automatic dual temperature control. A little silly when the top's down. Let's talk about the transmission. One choice only here, which is interesting. It's a CVT in a big vehicle that's all-wheel drive with a pretty big engine. You don't always see CVTs. They're kind of rare at that level. This one is really simple. PRNDL. When's the last time you saw that? No shift gate. No S for sport. No paddles up here for shifting. About all you got to switch over here to defeat overdrive. This is refreshingly basic and kind of honest. Whatever you're listening to comes out of Bose speakers, a 7 plus a subwoofer. Hard drive music and iPod scrolling are all pretty fast and fluid. That minimizes the amount of time your eyes will be on that and not on the road looking where you're going. Now a cross cab has a little more power out of its 3.5 liter V6 than a standard Murano. It's 265 on the horsepower, 248 foot-pounds of torque. Gets this 4,400 pound car up to 60 in the low 8 second range. The downside is it delivers hoggish MPG of 17 city 22 highway. Kiss that 22 goodbye, you'll never see it. This car weighs about 230 pounds more than a standard Murano, and of course, it's a big thing to push through the air, so there's just no winning that MPG battle. There's something cool about the cross cab being open and up high. It's a combination you don't normally get. Most SUVs aren't convertible, so that's the first thing you notice in this car. The next thing you notice is how this cross cab has a lot of power. It comes on nicely for everyday driving. It's not the kind of car you're going to take for, you know, carving up a canyon road, but it definitely has good everyday accessible power. The only thing I like to do, though, is kick it out of overdrive when I'm in the city. Otherwise, this thing tries to go to overdrive in low-speed driving. When you need power, you tip in, and it falls on its face. So that's the one thing I do. Beyond that, it's a good combination of power and transmission programming. But once you get out on the road, that's where things get weird. Maybe you can even see it here in the camera. It's shaking camera's mounted up on the cowl, the cowl doesn't seem to have any relationship to the rest of the car. 
We experienced this in the Volkswagen EOS recently. When you make a convertible and you cut out that rigid top, unless you do some very good engineering underneath, which isn't impossible, you end up with the, the whole cowl of the car kind of doing this. And this car has got a pretty bad case of that. You can always tell, look in the rear view mirror while you're going over a road that is anything but glass smooth, and the mirror is going like this. That means the car is twisting like this. It's not a nice feeling. The ride in this car is kind of springy and bouncy. It's kind of, you know, comfortably fun. Oh, and by the way, the cross-cab Bose audio system has more than enough guts to overcome all this road noise. Yeah. Anyway, let's price our Murano Cross Cab. 47.2, they only come one way, all loaded up like I showed you. There are only three options to talk about and they're all bizarre. One is a seat belt extender in case you're gonna be driving to your audition for The Biggest Loser. The other one is a set of airbag anti-theft bolts. Where do they think the buyers of this live? And the last one is really bizarre, sports horns. I don't make this up.